Hi everyone and welcome back to another Signals and Systems video. Today's topic is how to find the discrete time Fourier transform of a square pulse. So let's get started. So this is the problem that we're going to try and solve. We're going to try and find the discrete time Fourier transform of this signal x of n, which is a square pulse that starts at 1 and ends at 6, and it's equal to 1 over that range. I've written over here the uh, finite sum of a geometric series, uh, which we'll find useful in computing the transform. So first, let's start by writing out the definition of the Fourier transform x of e to the j omega hat, uh, we're using omega hat for the discrete time frequency variable, is defined as the sum x of n e to the minus j omega hat n. And let me write that a little more clearly, hopefully. Omega hat n. And um, the summation is computed in general over all possible values of n, so from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, all right, so that's the ger general definition of the Fourier transform. Um, so now we'll make it specific to this problem, and we notice, well, it only has to be a finite summation because this is only non-zero over this range. So we can rewrite this as the sum n equal 1 to 6, and over that range, x of n is just 1. So we're summing x of n, which is 1, e to the minus j omega hat n. All right, so now we have something that is in the same form as this partial sum of a geometric series. And the a here, basically, being a to the n, this is what a is equal to. a is e to the minus j omega hat. And um, the 1 here doesn't matter because we're just multiplying by 1, which has no effect. All right, so now we can use this equation here and write out the, the formula. So it will be e to the minus j omega hat raised to the, well, what's the lower index? The lower index is 1, so that's raised to the 1, minus e to the minus j omega hat raised to the upper index, which is 6, plus 1, all over 1 minus a, which in this case is e to the minus j omega hat. Okay, so this is a perfectly valid solution um, to this problem, but we won't find uh, this very easy to plot, so we need to reduce it just a little bit more um, to try and uh, get ourselves in a better position to plot it. Um, so we can rewrite, this will be e to the minus j omega hat minus e to the minus j seven omega hat over one minus e to the minus j omega hat. All right, so we have that formula. Um, but now we know, hopefully, from experience in class or elsewhere, uh, that we can actually rewrite this in terms of a sign on top and a sign on the bottom. But in order to get it in the form of a sign, we have to uh, figure out the right value to pull out. Okay, um, And that takes a little bit of practice to be able to see it. Uh, but in general, what we want here... Right? We're going to be able to convert this into sine of b times omega hat, and we just have to solve for what b is equal to. In general, b is going to be the length of this thing divided by 2. So in this case, that would be 6 over 2. So let me just see um, what I can do here. Um, so let me get set up. Um, so I'm going to have something that's pulled out there, but... In general, I want to be able to write this as e to the plus j 6 omega hat over 2 minus e to the minus j 6 omega hat over 2. Because again, 6 is the length of my signal, um, and I still have the denominator here. The denominator, I can pull out a factor of omega hat over 2, and I'm left with e to the plus j omega hat over 2 minus e to the minus j omega hat over 2. Now notice, for the denominator here, 
If I multiply back through, I multiply e to the minus j omega hat over 2 by e to the plus j omega hat over 2, I get 1. I multiply this term by this term, I get e to the minus j omega hat. So I'm still okay. The question is, what was I supposed to pull out over here? Um, so that when I multiply back through, multiply this back through, I'll get this. Um, and so what would have I... What would I have had to multiply e to the plus j 6 omega hat over 2 by in order to get e to the minus j omega hat? So e to the minus j omega hat is the same as e to the minus j 2 over 2 omega hat. Um, and so I think I'm going to have to take out e to the minus j 8 omega hat over 2. Okay. If I multiply back through... Um, by this, let's see if I get it right. So e to the minus j 8 omega hat over 2 times e to the j 6 omega hat over 2 would be e to the minus j 2 omega hat over 2, which is this, right? Reduces to e to the minus j omega hat. e to the minus j 8 omega hat over 2 times e to the minus j 6 omega hat over 2 is e to the minus j 14 omega hat over 2, uh, which ends up being e to the minus j 7 omega hat. So I'm okay, all right? Um, and I did this because I knew that I wanted the term in here to be the length of this signal divided by 2. Okay, um, so if I've done that, now I can hopefully recognize that the top here looks basically like in the same form as sine. I'd have to divide by 2j. The bottom looks in the same form as sine, but I'd have to multiply by 2j. So the 2j's effectively cancel out, and I can rewrite this as... Um, sine of 3 omega hat, that's 6 omega hat over 2, over sine of 3 omega hat, sorry, that's not quite right, over sine of omega hat over 2. And um, what do I have if I combine these two terms together, right? I bring this up here, so it has a positive sign. So I'm left with e to the minus j 7 omega hat over 2. Okay, so that was a lot of algebra, basically, but um, it was pretty straightforward um, to go ahead and figure out. So this is our final answer um, for a form of the discrete time Fourier transform. And it turns out that we'll be able to easily plot the, the magnitude of the frequency response for this uh, when the function is in this form. So this is a perfectly valid solution to the problem, right? Um, but if you need to plot it, you've got to rearrange and get it in this form, which was relatively straightforward to do. That concludes this video. Um, we'll have another related video where we actually show how to do the plot of the magnitude of this transform. But for now, this, that concludes this video. It was made for the ECE 201 course at George Mason University. Uh, if you want to find out more about the university, the School of Engineering, the ECE department, or me, check out these websites. Thanks for listening.